Okay, the next thing is to choose the right knife for the task that you're going to be doing. So I've got different varieties of knives here. I've got a very large chef's knife here, right? This is one you want to work up to. I've got a serrated knife. I've got a smaller. This size is great for kids. Smaller, uh, I would say a, a mini version of a chef's knife. And then a paring knife. Now, before we get into all the uses of those knives, important to remember uh, for your own self as a parent, when you're doing this process with your kids, the first thing is to become centered, to trust, and to be patient. So when you're doing the first step of teaching your child how to use a knife, don't be in a rush. Really make sure you're setting aside some time to do this in the right way so you have the patience with your child to go through the steps because when you're anxious, when you're nervous, is when you're going to make mistakes and when you possibly could hurt yourself. So one of the first things we teach at Sprouting Chefs with knife handling is confidence. Holding the knife properly in your dominant hand and holding it with confidence. So not holding it just a little bit, not being afraid of it, but really holding it securely. Also understanding that the top part of the knife won't be sharp, but the bottom part will. Now this is important too, because I've seen kids go in and pick up a knife this way. Very frightening. So always make sure they understand that this is the handle and this is the blade. A simple thing you would think that most people know, but a lot of first time uh, students don't know that. So the top part isn't gonna hurt them. They can put their hand on top of it. It's fine for extra security because that's what you want. The other important thing is a sharp knife is less likely to hurt you than a dull knife. Think about carving a pumpkin with a butter knife. That butter knife is more likely to slip and hurt yourself than a sharp knife that can easily cut through something. So we do have a tool here, a, a, a steel, and I'll just demonstrate, you know, quickly how to use it. You want to make sure that you're going down on a 45 degree angle approximately, one side and then the other side. So doing this first and showing the child that keeping it sharp also is very a respect, respectful thing for the knife. Most of the knives will cost between, you know, 15 to 150, 300 dollars. So you want to keep your knives in really good shape. Okay, so there it's sharp, right? Making sure your child is holding it the right way is the first step. The other thing is then to use this other hand is the other important tool. So making sure your, your nails are cut short and you're making that claw shape when holding the food and going up and down. So I will take a piece of celery, for example, and again, when you're starting this for the first time, ask your child which of these sizes they feel most comfortable with. Maybe they want a bigger size. Um, I have seen a six-year-old grab this first, grab this huge, long chef's knife first. Made me quite nervous, Ronan. Now, despite my nerves, he was confident. So before I let him jump to this, I watched him first with a size of knife this way, he handled it very well, and I did move him on to that one. But I wanted to see first and make sure that he could handle a smaller one first. So, um, holding your piece of food with your less dominant hand, so that would be for me my left, right? Making that claw shape. And then we're just gonna do a, a celery sticks here. You wanna place the food in the middle and you're not chopping down straight, you're chopping down in an angle this way and sliding your knife through. So again, I'll do the shorter stick, I guess, with these. Point of the knife at the tip of the board, uh, the tip of the knife at the bottom, and then you're pressing down. Now, if your child can't quite make it through, placing your hand on top is fine, and then pressing down all the way through holding the piece of food this way, sliding it. Now the other way is holding your food between your fingers, okay? And putting the knife in between your fingers like this. You're not gonna cut yourself, right? You know where your knife is. Your fingers are holding the food 
You're placing it down, again, tip down, and then hand on top. There's your sticks. Demonstrating this with, uh, demonstrating how to cut with things like celery sticks is a really good step because afterwards, obviously your child can use the celery sticks to actually eat. So again, I'm gonna do it this way, through my fingers this way, down, and then there's my sticks. Okay, they're making their own snack this way, right? The next thing is how many of us, especially with younger kids, might find an apple in your fridge with a couple of bites out of it. Uh, your child might not like it, they don't finish it, anything like that. So here's where I'm gonna demonstrate just cutting that part off. Maybe mom does this first. So mom might use a bigger knife like this. Uh, we're gonna hold it on either side again all the way down. Now this part you can discard, put in the compost, set aside. Then something like a fruit or veggie that's round is really important to put flat down on the surface of your board. So don't use it cutting it this way. You're having less control, which will result in less confidence. So you wanna put it flat. I say don't do it roly-poly. Put, put your piece of food flat. Now again, I'm gonna put my hands on my fingers in between on either side of the food. The knife goes in the middle, point of the knife goes down. It's gonna be a bit trickier, so I'm gonna put my hand on top and I'm gonna use the weight of my body to press forward. Now, coring, that was a big knife. What I like to do with younger kids, it depends on your skill level and the age, but I like doing it this way with kids is creating these quarter pieces and then also coring it, coring the apple into my compost pile. And then your younger students or children can then practice. You've got a flat space on there again and they can practice cutting whatever way they want. Now, if certain foods like tomatoes and, and foods with skins, peppers, tomato, um, apples included, you could, and if you have that hard time getting through the skin, just pierce it with the tip of your knife, okay? Make that little cut and then down. Doesn't have to be perfect cuts. That's a really key thing with all this too, is you're, you're not looking for perfection here, you're just going for practice. Okay, so there's apples, celery. Now the other thing that we have a lot of times in our kitchen that we're using are lemons. Kids love lemons, right? So asking them to help you cut them is a good way to get them into the kitchen too. So it's a, again, a round roly poly kind of um, fruit. So you want to practice safety here. You're gonna hold it this way really securely. If your child's having difficulty getting that knife through, let them get the cut going first. I can't do it quite yet, it's not, it's not working. Then get them to put their hands holding the fruit on either side with the knife in the middle. Then they can put their weight into it, put their ha hand flat on top and then press down. Now this is the cut we want when we're squeezing lemon juice out of it anyway. So that's basic knife cutting tutorial. If we wanted to get a little bit more advanced, if you have students or your kids that are have already mastered this part and you wanna let them practice, say, a dice cut. So you could take your celery and we're holding it this way and then we're just gonna be moving the knife up and down and sliding it. Just get them to practice that motion. Let their arm and their hand muscles learn how it feels to slide the knife up and down, rocking it back and forth on the surface before they even cut. This is training their muscle memory in their hand, just to get used to this. Then you're gonna put these, that you're gonna put the object in between. You're gonna hold it at the back. Notice my hands are curled in and tucked, and they're just gonna practice that rocking motion. Down and slide, down and slide, down and slide. And obviously something like this is great for soups. Now when you get to just the bottom ends, maybe ask them to put their hand over top, for safety. When you have a pile of food like this on your surface, 
You don't want to scrape using the sharp end of the blade. That will dull your knife. You want to flip it over and scrape with the flat side. Now, if I was taking all of this and I wanted a mince cut, so this would be like a dice, a mince cut, which some kids are quite good at after they've really mastered these pieces, is point to the knife down, hand on top, and we're just rocking the knife back and forth, making a dice cut. So obviously this is good for dicing garlic, or mincing garlic, mincing ginger, mincing herbs as well. So again, pile it all into the middle, hand on top, and we're just rocking back and forth, rocking back and forth, moving it into the middle. Minced celery is a great thing to have on hand if you're gonna be making a risotto with onions, for example, or any kind of sauce. So there's a good practice. Now, we've got all this stuff on our blades. We're making sure that we're scraping off going downwards this way, downwards this way. And there's mince. So we've got different cuts we've done. We've done things just in half. We've done an apple into quarter slices or thirds. And we also, we've also quartered it. My tip here is to have parents Cut the apples in half or anything round and big that your child just can't quite do yet. And coring and then let, letting them practice on the smaller pieces. Here we've got the celery sticks. And making sure, again, you're holding the food in between your fingers this way. And you're putting the knife in, in the middle. We've got the mints. And again, we have the simple dice. Holding the food this way and rocking back and forth. Stopping when it gets too close and then sliding the food, the blade end up, the sharp end up, and the flat blade part is used to scrape across the board.